Did you guys know there was a Caribbean population here that if you started, if you build it, they will come? Like, did you already know, or was this like a risk? Like, I'm, we're going to throw a Caribbean event and pray for the best. Yeah, we we knew it was here. Um, like I said, like she said, I I grew up here. I left Trinidad at a young age. I grew up here, and I've always been like a St. Pete Carnival or a Tampa mm-hmm. Carnival. So the diaspora has always been here. There've been these one or two Caribbean like restaurants here and there. So they I've known they've always been here. And then her going to school at like U. It was yeah, I went to USF. So. It, it's a big Caribbean population there at UT as well as a huge Caribbean population there. So we we've kind of always known that they were here. Just how do we get the problem was how do we get them to come Someone out? How do you unite them? How yeah. do we pull them out of the woodworks? You know, I, I would see her and like other people like her going to Miami all the time. I'm like, there's stuff here. Why are you not partying here? Right. Why are you not partying in your own city? And then. I have to ask him and find out. It's like, okay, well, they kind of don't want me partying with somebody that's 45 years old that looks like their dad or in a sketchy part of town or whatever. True, so. too. You know, you go advertising to all Caribbean people, you're going to get, you know, a vibe that you might not like. Yeah, right. 50s to 20s, and then things get, might get a little funny. Yeah, yeah. So, so how did you uh, address that? How did you find other Caribbean people like yourselves to throw these events for? What was that process like? Well, I think, you know, kind of back to the risk thing, like we yeah. knew we knew at that time that it was going to be a challenge mm-hmm. because people have gotten so used to going to all these other places that it's like now we have to basically find a way to reach them and figure out how are we going to reach them? Mm-hmm. You know, is it just social media? And that's when um, DMC implemented as one thing we were doing. He was actually going to these restaurants that we know about and like flyering cars. Yeah. Because because marketing old school yeah, yeah that's the old school way it. like yeah, flying cars it. half the people will throw them away but the other half are actually going to take a look and be like percent's pretty good yeah well, i don't know it's gonna <laughs> that's be probably way worse accurate. than that i don't know return. <laughs> but you know i we mean if you go fly a car a parking lot of 100 people and you get 10 people coming yeah that's still a, a return on your investment i guess yeah. anyway. no those, those are good they numbers have a good yeah. time then you're already thinking okay so they're gonna want to come to the next one yes and each of those 10 people might tell one or two people so I think I don't want to give away the secrets to the sauce, but I will say that um, organic marketing is how we've been able to grow in the past year. It's yeah. we don't even do a lot of marketing through social media. We probably do the least amount of our marketing I mean, our, our through social, our media. social media marketing budget, like for buying ads or whatever, is probably under 200 bucks a month oh wow it's yeah. not a lot you know we just just do it kind of for the heck of it but yeah. what's actually yeah. from the feedback we've received is that peop- the few people that started coming a year ago every time every month when we bring another one around they're telling their friends about it and then them and their friends are coming and then they're telling their friends about it so when you have that type of organic marketing and like i think our our instagram we don't even put a lot of energy into it obviously it has to be there for just your validity as a brand yes but it's a lot of word of mouth yeah so we focus now on the experience more than the marketing aspect i would i would add to that too the 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 little bit of marketing and stuff that we do put out we make sure it's quality Mm -hmm. like we're the only ones in the caribbean scene that we're actually doing skits Mm -hmm. like like comedy like shorts good and stuff like you, are you guys you both acting in some of them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> send me some skits. I will have to send you some of them. And it was that was again something you know. Can you do uh, one right now. Oh, you got your purse on you? Like just throw it out there right here. Real quick. <laughs> yeah, the very first one we did, I got hit in the head with my oh, with purse. my own purse. You were um, smacking her in the head? No. It, it so was it was him, but it was like him yeah. in my dream, so it wasn't. Really I was him. I was her subconscious speaking. Uh huh. What was the script there? <laughs> Here's um, what we're going to do. Improv? <laughs> yeah, was ba- improv? I'm going to be dreaming. Like, You're going to whack me in the head. So, yeah, basically. Caribbean I, and party. I wrote out a script, a general script, and then we just kind of like, it's snowball. Like, yeah. She's like, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? I was like, do this, do that. And it just became this like comedy treasure. It just. Send people me that. We'll, we'll link it in the show notes. Yeah. For, people for some <laughs> reason, they they were like, oh my God, that was so funny, huh? I was like, that really hurts. <laughs> but so That's it became it was like a thing. And I'm also always eating. Like, I'm always eating. So now that got incorporated into the skits. Like so every single every one, every single skit, I have to eat, be eating something. something. So now it's like we figured out little staples. And, you know, a lot of we had to think of basically things that set us apart from just other regular, like not regular, but 
event promoters, right? Yeah. Because it is a saturated market in a lot of places, but our niche is not. Right. So it's like, how do you separate yourself from everybody else, especially being brand new? A lot of promoters out here, they've been doing this for 10 plus years. So we're now going up against people that have been doing this for a very long time. And they're like, who are these two new people that just started throwing parties well, in as a, as a collective, as MVP, as a collective. As a collective. Not, a not, not DMC, but us together as a brand. They're like, what, what is this? You're building a community of people like you. And it's very easy to market for a community. Everyone wants to be part of a community, especially locally. Right. Uh, and it seems like you guys are really tapped into that. And there's probably ways to monetize your community past just the events, which I'm sure you know you'll we'll, we'll figure out over some time. But what you you know built and it seems like is a community of people from Trinidad who want to spend time with each other and the whole of the Caribbean. And we also honestly of have a lot of people now that come to the events that aren't even from the Caribbean. They just love the culture. Yeah, and they're like oh my God, I had so much fun, like the dancing, the music, and they're yeah. just not used to that. They're used to the same nightclubs every weekend, right. the same thing, and they're like, Grand this is experience. so different. It's a different experience.